Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we will be getting the hang of Hyperscribe. Now, getting the hang of is actually a good way to put it, because Hyperscribe, as a way to enter notes in Finale, um, is definitely takes some getting used to. Uh, in fact, it can be quite frustrating if you're not performing with military precision and if you don't have the uh, setup correct. Um, and the setup itself is so important that I, I'm actually going to start with that because I if you get the setup right, you'll actually have a fighting chance with Hyperscribe. And by the setup, I I'm, I'm mean three things, really. The tempo, the click setup, and the quantization. Um, so let's get right into it and talk about those three things. Uh, now, to get into Hyperscribe, Hyperscribe, by the way, is this tool that's right next to the speedy entry, but before the triplet tool. You may actually have never even entered it, um, but here it is. And we have a Hyperscribe menu here. And we're going to look at tempo first. So what we want to choose is beat source, playback, and or click, which is probably already checked. Just select that. And we get the playback and or click dialog box. Now the first part will deal with the tempo. And there's two options here. Use playback tempo. With this checked, it will use the tempo that you have set in your playback controls. Um, or we can override that by using uh, the second option, which is use this tempo. And from here, we could change this to whatever we want, 85. Um, or we could use the listen button, and that'll bring up this smaller dialog box. And we can actually just click a tempo in there until we get the one we want, 79, sure. Or we could uh, do the same thing with any note on your MIDI keyboard until you get the number you want, sure, 83. Right, or obviously just enter the value right there, and you're good to go. And then obviously the beat equals, so it will be quarter note equals 80. But we could change it if uh, we're in a different meter. If we want, uh, if we're in a compound time, we could change the dotted quarters, etc. All right. So that's how you would deal the tempo with the tempo. Um, the one thing to know about the the tempo is that uh, regardless of what you have set here, if you have a tempo expression already in your score, and that tempo expression has a tempo assignment to it, that tempo expression will override both of these options, right? So no matter what you have chosen here, um, the tempo that you have in your score via expressions will override them. I actually wish that the second option overrode the expressions, because then you could sort of temporarily use this tempo that you set here to record a passage. But alas, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, all right, so that's just how that is. Uh, start s signal for recording. I'm going to deal with a later video, but there are some other options. And obviously, play staffs while recording. If you have this unchecked, it will mute everything except for the staff that you're recording, obviously. Um, so th that option is available, too, depending on what you're doing. All right, so that is uh, tempo. And then click and count off. We'll click on that, and we'll get another dialog box where we have some count off and click options and the metronome sound. Now, for now, we'll just deal with the finale click metronome. I'll, I'll deal with the other ones in a later video. And we can make the down beats a little bit louder than the other beats uh, in this section right here. And for count off, we have a few options. This will create a count off while recording, only while recording, only while playing, never or always. Now, there's actually some advantage if you want to choose always or while playing regardless of whether or not you're in Hyperscribe or not, if you have one of those two options, you will hear that count off whenever you uh, play back uh, your score. If you wanted to hear that, that might be handy or not. And then same thing with click. We have the options to hear the click only when recording, only when playing, uh, never hear the click, and always hear the click. So uh, y you could select that, and you'll hear that click go through your playback, um, whether or not you're in Hyperscribe or not. Um, interestingly, you could actually choose count off uh, while recording, but click never. In this case, you would actually hear the click just for the count off, and then as soon as the music started, the click would go away. All right, so that's uh, another option for you. But 90% of the time, we probably want while recording and while recording for count off and click. And this will this measures here will allow you to dictate exactly how many measures you want to count off to, but we can. Let's just change that to one to make it a little bit quicker. And then click OK. And that's the click and count off options and the tempo options. And then the third thing I talked about was hyper, uh, the quantization settings, right? So to get there, we want to go to Hyperscribe Options. And uh, I'll talk about some of these uh, later. But we're going to Quant Settings, nice abbreviation there, Finale. 
uh, to get the quantization settings dialog box. Now this is critical and um, I'll, I'll illustrate why as, as we get going here. But the first section here is the smallest note value, right? Now the idea behind this is that you want to choose the smallest note value to be as large as possible uh, based on what it is you're recording. So if you're recording a string of quarter notes, just choose quarter notes as the smallest note value. This will this will eliminate a lot of errors in uh, in your transcription. Um, you know, for if you have sixteenth note uh, selected, you know, if you play it just off enough closer to the you know the fourth sixteenth note of beat four instead of the downbeat, you know, finale will put that note on the fourth sixteenth and it and it won't look right, right? So again, you want to make sure the smallest note value is as large as possible based on the music that you're recording. And we do have some tuplet options down here. With no tuplets versus mixed rhythms or space note evenly in beat where we can get tuplets, um, the first option is going to be less inaccurate um, if that's at all possible. If there's no tuplets, just choose no tuplets because it will, it will prevent some, some other problems with with the transcription. If you have to have tuplets, then you can choose either the mixed rhythms or the space notes evenly. And the difference between the two, you can see in the second uh, beat that they have here as an illustration, is that you'll get the 16th dotted eighth versus the uh, two eighth notes with the space notes evenly in beat. Now this um, section of the dialog box is a little bit confusing, but what it's showing you is that if you play this triplet 16th dotted eighth um, with no tuplets selected, what you'll get is this rhythm. With mixed rhythm selected, you'll get this rhythm, which is exactly what you played. With the space notes evenly in beat, what you'll get is this third rhythm, right? Um, so there's sort of three different options uh, based on, um, uh, on what you play in and what you'll get, right? So again, depending on what you're recording, you know, choose one or, or one of these options that's uh, closest to what you uh, you want to see, all right? And then finally, I, I just want to talk about the, the quantization settings and MIDI in Finale in general. Now, you know when you record MIDI in a DAW, like Logic or uh, Digital Performer or something, you record um, raw MIDI data, which isn't always necessarily accurate on the beat at the first go around, right? So if you try and play with the quarter note, you may get a few EDUs left or right, uh, of the quarter note just before the beat, just after the beat. That's sort of what gives it its sort of human quality, right? It's not a strict metronomic performance. Well, in Finale, it will record those um, those small differences regardless of the quantization settings. Those uh, MIDI values will get recorded into the file. With the quantization settings, all that it's doing is displaying the more quote-unquote accurate version of what it is you're playing. So. In essence, with Hyperscribe, you will actually get both of those options. You get the the quantized version showing in the staffs, but underneath that, you'll get the raw MIDI data. And when you export MIDI from Finale into a, uh, into Logic or something else, what you'll be exporting is actually that raw MIDI data, right? So you, you won't necessarily be uh, exporting that strict quarter note rhythm, uh, per se. It will be exported just as you had played it. It will also, by the way, record other MIDI controller data like um, sustain pedals or pitch bends or volume changes or any of that other stuff um, that, uh, that you could record. So that's kind of an interesting thing and handy thing to know. Uh, but for our purposes, let's say for right now, what I'm about to record, I'm not going to play anything uh, shorter than an eighth note. So I'm going to choose eighth note, no tuplets, and this is going to be my quantization, my quantization settings to start off click OK and now just with the rest of these options the only thing I want to talk about is the uh, tie across bar lines so <laughs> finale with hyperscribe uh, what it does is it records frame by frame and a frame in finale is just the b from the beginning of the measure to the end of the measure that's one frame and what you need to know is that all the MIDI data will never cross the frame so it will never cross the bar lines essentially Unless you have tie across bar lines, then only the durations will ever cross the frame. What this means, though, is that if you are using some of that other MIDI controller data, like uh, sustain pedals or pitch bend or all that stuff, those will get cut off at the frame break or at the, the bar line, right? 
just something to be aware of if you if you're thinking about trying to record in some uh you know emotional piano thing with a sustain pedal or something it you'll get some funky results because the sustain pedal um will not uh will not refresh at the right moment or, or you know you'll get some errors with with stuff like that so there are limits with uh hyperscribe in this regard but uh just just be aware that it's it records frame by frame except with this option here tie across bar lines because if i did not have this option checked I could play a note on beat four and hold it through the next bar and you won't see anything in that following bar. It'll just stop at the end of the bar. It'll stop at the end of the frame, right? So sometimes it's good to have this tie across bar lines. Other times you want to have it unchecked because you can get some, uh, some mixed results where you mean to play a quarter note, but you actually play a little bit into the next bar and you don't necessarily want to see that, right? So again, use this tie across bar lines uh, option to your advantage um, if you need it or if you don't need it, all right? Let's just say I'm gonna have it off for now and I'll click okay, all right? So we've got our tempo set up, we've got our click set up, we've got our quantization set up. So the next thing we need to do is start recording. And when you're in Hyperscribe, this is fairly easy. All you have to do is just choose the measure that you wanna start recording in and click on it. And when you click on a measure, um, you'll hear the count off first, immediately start. And then after the count off, you can start playing. So I'm gonna do that right now. And when you're done recording, um, the click will keep going, but nothing's really happening. Um, to stop the recording, just click anywhere outside of the staff, and you'll see it stop. Now, you'll notice with that tie, this third measure, you may have noticed that I tried to play it into the fourth measure, right? And because I didn't have that option checked, it didn't tie it over, right? Into the hyperscribe options, I had tie across bar line unchecked, and it got cut off at the bar line, right? If I were to do the same thing here, and incidentally, to record uh, over something, just click on the same measure again, and it will just record right over it. This time, I'll hold that to the end of the second bar. And, well, you see, it's, this is one of the problems. You'll see that it, it did tie that, uh, that, that whole note into the fourth bar, but it also gave me some other weird um, weird things like it tied the D because it thinks I played the D just a little bit into the next bar, right? So again, you know, it, it depending on what you're doing, sometimes using that uh, tie across bar line is helpful. Other times it's not. All right, so just be aware of that. And uh, let me actually just slow the tempo down because I think that it's sometimes easier at slower tempo. So let's use the 80 tempo. And I'm going to start playing with some of the quantization settings just to kind of show you uh, what you can achieve with this. Now, I have it set to eighth note, um, but let me just show you something. If I choose the 32nd note, which is a really small value, right? And remember, my tempo now is at 80. Uh, I'm going to attempt to record quarter notes in for two bars, and we'll see what happens. Um, let's, so let's give it a shot. Now, I was really concentrating and attempting to be as accurate as possible. And you can see that with that type of quantization, you're going to get errors like this. Like it thinks that at that first and second note, I was a 30 second late. Same with the first one here and the first one here, right? So again, you have to make sure that that quantization setting is set to the highest possible value. If I have this on quarter note, this is, this is a you know, walk in the park. In fact, I can be pretty inaccurate with it and still get good results, right? So use those quantizations settings to your advantage. And let me just, I'm just gonna go through and show you some triplet options. <coughs> the one thing to know about these triplet options, by the way, is that if you want quarter or eighth note triplets and you choose the smallest note value of eighth note and choose one of the, mix, the triplet mixed rhythms, for example, you know, you're not going to be able to get eighth note triplets. Why? Because the the duration of a single eighth note triplet is actually smaller than the duration of a single eighth note, right? That makes sense. So in order to get eighth note triplets, 
um, in this manner, we do have to make sure that the smallest node is one value smaller than the triplet value that we want. So in this case, case the 16th notes. With the 16th note checked here and the mixed rhythms, now I can get uh, triplet eighth notes. All right, and I'm going to go with the mixed rhythms here and see what kind of results we can get. And I'll try and play some triplets and maybe some 16th notes. Let's see what happens. Oof, that was not very accurate. Let's see how I did. All right, so it's pretty good in the second, first and second measure, actually. But yeah, this was, I meant to be a triplet on this fourth uh, beat here and the second beat here. And, um, you know, it was actually pretty good except for those two beats. Uh, so again, you can kind of see how, how tricky this can be. All right. Um, now, I did mention that we can uh, record over something just by re-clicking in the measure. Interestingly, if you, let's say I'm gonna re-record the second measure, but I wanna leave the third measure. Um, just FYI, what you can do is just start recording in the second measure. And if you stop before playing the third measure and actually just keep the metronome going, it doesn't matter how long, I haven't played anything after that measure and click out of it to stop it, you'll see that it will retain that uh, third measure, all right? Oh, good, and this did something that I was hoping that I, I would uh, do for you. You'll notice that it put a rest on beat one here, and obviously you heard me play on beat one. The one thing to know about Hyperscribe is that before the beginning of the recording, if, you're, if your first note is ever so slightly before the beat, it's not within the confines of where the recording starts technically. So even if the quantization would have put it on beat one, because it, I started it outside the parameters of, of where the recording started, it, it, it gets chopped off, right? Um, so this will happen a lot. So that, that's one thing you do have to be really careful about is making sure that that very first note lands within that first frame of recording, right? Otherwise, you'll, you'll get a lot of stuff like this where the first note won't get recorded. Um, the other thing I was going to point out about uh, recording in this manner is I'm going to do that one more time. Stopping before the third measure. But I'm going to play in the fourth measure. And interestingly, it will retain that third measure instead of recording over a blank measure, right? Uh, so just kind of an, an interesting, actually I played that pretty accurately that time, didn't I? That was pretty good. Um, so that's another uh, a thing to know about Hyperscribe is that you can actually record, you know, uh, passages on, on, the, on either side of a, a measure or something. So if you wanted to fix the second and fourth bar, you can, you can do it like that. All right. Uh, this is the basics of Hyperscribes. As you can see, it, it, there is some, uh, some uh, finickiness with it. And uh, sometimes it does take a little bit of trial and error to get the quantization correct, uh, depending on the type of rhythms that you're recording and all that stuff. So, um, you know, but for certain things where if you're doing a string of eighth notes for a long time or a string of quarter notes or something, or very simple rhythms, um, it can be somewhat effective. All right, so uh, thanks for watching. Come back, I've got some more videos to do on some more advanced features, including the next one I'm gonna start looking at um, the options available to, s to split the recording into two staffs for piano and stuff like that. Um, we can do multi-track recordings. I'll show you how to do recordings in layers and everything uh, in the next video. So, all right, so thanks for watching. Come back soon for more Hyperscribe videos, and I'll see you then.